and welcome back. Uh, this week's Capital Report, we have our good friend Pat McGuigan from CapitalBeatOK.com. Pat, you had something on your site uh, that, that you wrote up about the EPA this week and how it really affects a lot of our viewers. Talk a little bit more about that and, and what this does mean. Yeah, there's a an EPA regional haze standard that's been under discussion for a couple of years and it's provoked quite an argument. It's It's controversial because it's an ambient, uh, meaning what you see in the air, an ambient standard rather than based on uh, pollution. And they're taking a situation where there's a lot of haze at uh, the Wichita Wildlife Refuge in southwestern Oklahoma and using it as the basis, the EPA is, to pressure Oklahoma utility companies to switch fuels from coal to uh, natural gas. So that's the, the framework. Now, there's been a lot going on on this. The Americans for Prosperity is passionately opposed to this, so is Attorney General uh, Scott Pruitt. And AFP um, says that the stated estimated rate increases of 11 to 12 percent for residential users are actually understated. They say it's going to be more like 20 percent if this is implemented which would be a couple hundred dollars per family, you know, per residential, uh, non-commercial family. I don't know if anybody's run the numbers yet for commercial rates and what it might do. Well, Matt Ball of the AFP, Americans for Prosperity, here in the state, says that uh, this is based on pseudoscience and, you know, they're, they're engaged in a good fight against it. On the flip side, the supporters include the Sierra Club, now, part of what makes this interesting, Rusty, is that the utilities are split, which is unusual. You know, uh, businesses will usually be generally aligned mm -hmm. in when it comes to regulations. But PSO, Public Service of Company of Oklahoma, in the northeastern part of the state, is willing to accept the regional Hayes standard and make the conversion, whereas OGE, OG&E, has been litigating on it. Further, there was an effort to develop state-based standards and um, uh, Attorney General Pruitt has litigated to try to preserve the option for Oklahoma to craft its own approach. Well, the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeal uh, last week uh, ruled two to one against Oklahoma. So the question is, is he going to appeal? Because that'll be a, a challenging, difficult process. He might be, might be able to get the full court at the 10th Circuit in Denver to take a fresh look at it, uh, but I think it's going to be tough. So that's the, the background. Now, James Langford, the congressman here from Oklahoma City, says uh, absolutely he predicts that it will cause uh, rate increases somewhere in that 12 to 20 percent range. So this is very controversial, and it translates into real pocketbook issues. Would those rate increases go across the state? That would be for... Uh, it would, all, all it would be the rate or? payers of the individual utility, okay. but there are as few as two to as many as six hmm. uh, uh, power generation plants that might have to do the fuel switching. That would be interesting and important to watch. Yeah, it's very significant, and uh, that's exactly what we need to do is keep an eye on it because it'll, whether there's going to be an appeal or not is not clear yet to me. Interesting. Hey, uh, also... Uh, talking about state leaders taking on a more national uh, leadership role, uh, you, you've got some names and and what they're what they're tasked to do. Yeah, Mary Fallon uh, is headed or is now in um, the great state of Wisconsin, where the National Governors Association is meeting. And as many of the viewers know, she's been the vice chair mm -hmm. of that organization. She's now assuming the chairmanship. And this weekend, we'll be giving a major speech to lay out her national platform for the organization. Does something like that keep her out of the state more? Do you think it takes away attention from what oh, she's going to do here? Oh, some, day, some days, okay. because they, they will have, it takes some days at a time, a chunk, a couple different times a year. And she has represented the NGA and the state of Oklahoma in some meetings with President Obama. And although I wouldn't say they're close friends, they've been cordial mm -hmm. in their relationship. And of course, he was helpful to the state after the tornado. Uh, but it's not just Governor Fallon. Attorney General Pruitt is uh, testified this past week in Washington, D.C. on um, 
the Affordable Care Act mm -hmm. and Oklahoma's challenge to that. And then finally, Todd Lamb a couple of weeks ago talked with Alex about Todd Lamb being uh, assuming the chairmanship of the National Lieutenant Governors Association. So I guess you'd call these three players um, at the national level. Well, either way, it's good exposure for Oklahoma, showing that our, our state leaders here can certainly take on some national challenges. Pat McGuigan uh, can always read the latest from him on CapitalBTOK.com. We'll link it up on News9.com. Have a safe trip to Iowa visit, visiting family. That's right. I'm All looking right. forward to it. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot, Pat. We'll be right back.